I'm working in the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook. I'm in Tutorial 5 and on page AC254 I'm going to create a lookup field in the Panorama database. So I'll start by opening up the contract table and I'm going to try to create a lookup field in the customer ID field because what I want to do is instead of displaying the customer ID number, I want to display the customer name. Good way to do that is with the lookup. And I'll come to the data type and I'll change it to lookup wizard. Now in this version of Access, it's going to prevent me from creating a lookup in a table when I already have a relationship on that field. So I'll click OK, I'll close the table. I won't save a change to the design. I'll go into the database tools relationships and I'll right click and click delete to re delete that relationship. One of the mistakes that folks make here is that instead of deleting the relationship, they click on the table and they press delete. That doesn't delete the relationship, it just simply hides the table. So if I come up and click on all relationships, it's going to bring that table back. So I need to right click on the line between the two tables and delete the relationship. Save it and go back into my contract table, open it in design view, go into the customer ID field, click lookup, and it's going to fire up the lookup wizard. I have two options. I can look up the values in another table or query, or I can type the values. I'm going to click on type the values first to show you what this looks like. I'll click next, and now I would have to physically type in the values that I want to look up. So I can put in as many columns as I want, um, and then type in the first value and the description of that value and go on to the next one. I would use a, a lookup like this if I, these values were not going to change very often, like 50 states or Mr. Ms. Miss, something that is not going to change on a, on a regular basis because in order to change the values in this type of lookup, I'd have to physically go into my properties and change them there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a dynamic lookup. Every time the underlying table changes, my lookup will change to match the change in the table. So I'll click the first option. I want to look up the field to get the values from another table or query. I'll click Next. And I'm going to choose in this t case, Queries and Customers by Name. Now a little hint to you here, if your Customers by Name query doesn't work, it's not going to work in the lookup. Go click Next. Now I want to look up Customer and cu Customer ID. I'm going to look up the customer and be able to see the customer name, but the value I'm going to store is Customer ID because that's the value that is stored in this table. That is the foreign key. So Customer, Customer ID, I'll click Next. I'm going to sort ascending on customer and click next. Now if I don't like the order of these fields, I can actually just move them around. You can grab it and just move the field to a new position. So I clicked on it, selected it, grabbed it by the title bar and moved it. Clicked to select it, grabbed it by the title bar and moved it. Now we want it in the original arrangement which is customer and customer ID and I'm going to resize these columns to fit first and then I'm going to make some changes to this first column that you may think a little outrageous but what you'll find out if you create this lookup by just simply sizing to fit is that your columns will not be long enough. You need to make this column about 25 percent wider than you think it should be. So what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to grab it out, grab it and bring it to about out here. So I'll click, pull it out about here. Now the column header, customer and customer ID will not show unless you go into the properties later and set them to show. So I don't need to worry if part of the 
the letter is cut off. Is I'm actually going to use that label in my second column as a resizing guide. So I've made my first column wider than I think it should be and I'm going to do that off the widest field and it looks like it's this one so I'm going to make it a little bit wider and then leave this one size to fit with the column header. Click Next and it, it's in this next screen you are asked to select a row in the lookup field where you can store that value in your database. Now the value that is being stored is customer ID and so that is the field that we're going to select. You don't want to store customer name in the customer ID field. We're going to see customer name but we're not going to store it. We're going to store customer ID. Click Next. What label do I want? I'm going to go with the default label and I'll click Finish. And let's take a look. I'll resize it to fit. We're going to come into the first field, click the drop down arrow, and we'll see our lookup. See where it shows the name of the customer, and this is coming from the query, and then the customer ID. When we select a name from this list, it's actually going to store the number. I'm going to go ahead and select Fins on the Waterfront to replace Sabrina Fernandez. But what we've essentially done there is we've taken Sabrina's contract and we've assigned it to Fins. All I wanted to do there is to see if this would work. Now I'm going to take that contract and give it back to the original customer. Just wanted to see if it would work. I'm going to click Save on this because I resized the column width. I'm going to go back to Design View and we're going to take a look in the Field Properties at the Lookup tab. When we created this lookup, it gave us a combo display. The row source is a table query. It wrote a select query. The bound column is column 2. And that would be customer ID. Here's my first column is customer. My second column is customer ID. That's the column we want bound. My column heads are not showing. Remember I told you that the column heads won't show unless you turn them on. My column width, mine are 2.8 basically and 0.75. These two numbers add up to this number. So if your column widths are too narrow, you'd like to change them. And I'll go ahead and change mine here. I'll change this to 2.9. I need to take this number and this number and add them up and that's the number I should have here. So what would that be? 3.65? Oops, I got too many points in there. There we go. And the lightning bolt just asks me if I want to propagate this through to all of the objects that use this particular field. And let's go ahead. It'll probably tell me no, it did. Let's take a look at it again. Click the drop down arrow. You see there's plenty of room for the customer name to show completely. Go back and take a look at our properties again. 16. If you would count the number of records that show in that drop down arrow would be 16. Limit to list means that you cannot add something that's not on the list. Allow multiple values. As we're creating the lookup there's an option where we can create multiple values. You, This is not something that you were asked to do and in this particular book you're not going to be dealing with multiple values until you get into the later chapters. So it's not something that we would be selecting. We'll save the rest of the properties for another time. I'm going to go back on View, and I'll go ahead and close this table. 